Hi there and welcome back to my channel. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about finding your carbohydrate threshold. What amount of carbohydrates makes you feel the best and what can you sustain long term to be able to get to your health goals and make sure you maintain that for the rest of your life. So let's get into it. So the first, the first thing you want to understand is that where you are starting off health wise, where is your blood sugar levels? What is your activity level? What do you do on a daily basis? How much sitting do you do? How much uh, carbohydrates do you realistically want to bring back into your life? What are your overall health goals, right? There's a lot to consider here. And that's something that I go through with my one-on-one -on -one clients is that we want to make sure that we're bringing back carbohydrates for the right reason and in the right way to support those goals. Because, you know, you can bring carbohydrates in willy-nilly and that's totally fine, but you want to do it for the right reasons and in the right way. So. The first initial thing is that if your fasting blood glucose is over six millimoles, or I, I believe that's about 120 uh, milligrams per deciliter, uh, then you may want to start off with a low carb approach or a ketogenic approach first, because that has always had a really beneficial impact on fasting blood glucose, getting that down back into a, a normal range. You know, those types of nutritional protocols can really help, or at least balancing out your carbohydrates throughout the day and trying to minimize the process once, right? Right. So that's a starting point. You want to kind of get a bit of an idea of where you want this to go. And then we move from there. So the second aspect of all of this is you want to make sure that you are eating sufficient protein. If you are bringing back carbohydrates and if you're trying to find that carbohydrate threshold, you need to kind of be eating a consistent amount of protein throughout the day, throughout the week and throughout that month to be able to really find where that level works for you. So making sure that you're getting anywhere between 1.2 grams per kilo up to 1.6 grams per kilo or for those people who um, you know use the imperial system then maybe it's about a pound of lean body mass that can always be a great place to start obviously some people can eat much more protein than that and some people can eat less um, but you just want to make sure that that's consistent moving forward uh, a lot of my clients if they bring back carbohydrates a lot of the times their protein goes down so you just want to make sure that your protein is stable and you want to make sure that you're bringing it back in the right way so the third part of all of this is that you want to have some subjective and some objective data to be able to work from. What does that actually mean? Well, you might want to start tracking your macros or you might want to keep a food journal or you might want to just write down what you're eating in a notebook so that you can keep a bit of an idea of what types of foods you're eating throughout the day and how much of those particular macronutrients are in those foods. You don't have to get super detailed, but if you keep a consistent food log, then you get a bit of an idea of what you eat and then what some of those foods are affecting the day after or that week or whatever. So you just wanna make sure that you're either tracking macros or keeping some type of food log, and that will give you some really, really good data to be able to work from. And then you also want to be able to start tracking some type of uh, sleep and stress and mood and energy and, and digestion values because all of that has a big impact when you start changing your diet. If your digestion goes through the floor and you can't seem to hold on to any food, then it doesn't matter what you do with carbohydrates. If your digestion is going really bad, then that's not a good sign. And vice versa, if your digestion starts to improve, you kind of want to know that. You want to know that, hey, if I do this or if I eat these particular foods and if I eat this amount of carbohydrates, then my digestion improves and that's great. I didn't really notice that because uh, maybe in the past you haven't been doing that subjective analysis on yourself. So that is a great way to be able to do that. And it's also a really, really important thing to be able to find your carb threshold. From there, then it's all about bioindividuality. So you're eating sufficient protein, your fasting blood glucose is in a relatively normal range. Um, you are starting off with a, you know, a particular amount of macros or maybe you're using a food log and you have a pretty good idea of where you know, your mood and your sleep and your digestion and all those sorts of things are. Then you want to start playing around with how many carbs and how much fat you can have in a particular day whilst keeping your weight stable or whilst performing best in the gym or whilst feeling all of those really great bio biofeedback metrics. Um, and so from there, that's that's really where we start playing with some of that bioindividuality for you. And also, if you are doing some type of exercise, then that's where we can start pairing some of that carbohydrates with that particular exercise. So whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're into endurance or maybe your strength or maybe you're doing some type of HIIT exercise, that's where utilizing those carbohydrates around that time can be helpful. And then to finally wrap up all of this, 
if you are someone who is doing exercise and you know for most people i recommend doing exercise it is something that is going to really help your um, your body composition it may not help the scales it's not the greatest thing to add if you're losing weight um, and it's not going to affect your weight loss you're not going to exercise to cause weight loss what exercise does is it creates this great hormonal response in your body to say hey let's keep this muscle that we've got or hey let's add to some of that muscle and muscle is super super important for your metabolism super important for the metabolic effect of food so when you start doing that when you start understanding that hey i need to hang on to the muscle that i have because it's really hard to build long term is that then if you're building uh, muscle or if you're maintaining muscle or if you're doing some exercise then you can pair some of your, uh, your carbohydrates around what's called your peri-workout nutrition. So your pre-workout and your post-workout uh, meals, and whether that's a meal or whether that's just you know dinner, then that is totally up to your schedule. But 65% of your carbohydrates in that particular time frame is a great place to put that. So you can maximize the amount of carbohydrates you're eating if you are able to do that, and then you know place the rest of your food into the rest of the day wherever that fits in. So I hope this video is helpful. Um, you know what I do is I help people go keto and lose weight and get to the best health of their entire life, and then I help you bring back carbohydrates in a sustainable way to ensure that you don't gain that weight back again. So if that's something you're interested in, get in contact with me, leave a comment below, and I'd love to help you out. So in, until next time, good luck.